Hello and welcome to another edition of Press Pass on GNET TV. I'm Andrew McKeever, the news director here at GNET TV's News Project. It's a pleasure to have you with us today on Thursday, March 12th. Also a great pleasure to be joined here in the studio by two uh, old colleagues from uh, days gone by. Great to have uh, with us today Howard Weiss-Tisman, who is the Southern Vermont reporter for Vermont Public Radio, and also Jim Therrien, who is a writer and reporter for the Bennington Banner. Gentlemen, thank you very much for making the time to be in, <clears throat> in today, um, squeezing it in between, I know, some busy schedules. So uh, I guess the obvious starting point for us today is the coronavirus. Uh, a couple of days ago when I was sitting down thinking about what some of the topics were that we would talk about, I figured, well, you know, that's a, that's a big deal story. We should start off with that. And I figured uh, might be a couple of minutes of uh, conversation about that. <laughs> but uh, wow, this is what you call a fast moving, uh, kind of head snapping sort of story. Uh, um, I guess, uh, Jim, uh, Bennington County uh, sort of gotten the news in terms of that with uh, Ground Zero. having the yeah. first patient uh, diagnosed with uh, the, uh, the virus uh, at the South, uh, Southern Vermont, uh, Southwestern Vermont Medical Center. What else do we know about, uh, about all of that? Well, it's, it's pretty hard to tell what that actually means as far as the number of cases, but it does seem that this virus is, is spread already, and um, I know in Berkshire County in Mass, just over the border, they had, I think, five people and uh, four, maybe 50 nurses at Berkshire Medical Center uh, under watch. Hmm. So there were a lot, of, um, a lot of cases around, and probably the testing is really what we haven't had, and there must be more, I would think. Uh, whether that it, how bad that is in terms of uh, people getting sick, it's pretty hard to tell. Uh, we have that one person, I guess, was um, I think 80 years old and um, had been recovering in the hospital. Um, concrete uh, facts about what's going to happen next, it's, it's pretty hard to, to predict. And it's un unclear to me what um, whether this is really going to diverge a lot from some of the other flus out there that we've had already, mm -hmm. but we didn't have the internet to uh, kind of get things out really fast. Uh, so I, I don't know how much that influences what's going on. Uh, national, nationally, though, it's really a disaster, it seems like. And yeah, coordination is... And the worst is yet to come. I know. I, mean, I was like looking at my uh, 401k and, <laughs> and, and keep Trump off TV. That's all I can say. And we were talking earlier just <clears throat> how quickly this story is moving. Um, as we're taping today, the second case was uh, recognized late yesterday mm -hmm. up in Chittenden County. Mm -hmm. Colleges are closing across the state. I think Sterling College announced today was closing. I think Bennington College is still open as we're going to tape. A lot but of I wouldn't events be surprised. Events, events are canceled. <laughs> Colleges are being canceled. Williams College. So. Um, you know, uh, elementary schools and high schools. Again, as we're going to tape, there aren't any widespread closures in Vermont, but in other parts of the country, that um, that's happening. So this is a really fast-moving story. Before we started taping, we talked about. I can't remember another story that that had such an impact that was moving so quickly that you can barely keep up with it, what's going on. So um, I think it's going to be here for certainly a little while. Oh, yeah. You know, it's got to go through a, a cycle, of of, at least a cycle of some yeah. kind. I, um, I was thinking, too, that the, all these things that you you think are going on, like the NBA canceling, yeah. but and I hear there's a lot of rumors at the state house that they're going to try to jam things through fast or some, something right. might happen like that and close down early. I mean, all these things, uh, the... I think the chamber had something from Bennington. Uh, they had, a they had the something dome. that was canceled. Yeah. Uh, okay. you know, and Special yeah. Olympics at Pico have been right. canceled. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty uh, amazing. Uh, courts are sort of not going to be delayed. I noticed the calendar or? on the courts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Superior. So we're courts. bracing for it. I mean, I don't know if we're <clears throat> if we're ready for it. If the hospitals are ready for it, um, medically and everything else. But I feel like. Um, Consciously, we're all ready for it. I mean, this has been talked about. This is out there. I think everyone is just, you know, holding tight and listening, um, washing hands, and right. seeing how this all plays out. Not shaking hands. Not shaking hands. <laughs> I'm really hoping that we get a bunch of, a uh, ton of money, I think, from the gov federal government 
because you're going to have to have all kinds of expenses that you never had yeah. before. Uh, and then you have the issue of people, you want them to stay home. They should be getting um, well, it's like interesting paid, how paid leave or something. Right. Mm. I mean, that sort of sparked a, a renewed debate around that, that people should get some sort of paid. And here you go. Leave. Quebec just declared a state of emergency. So. Yeah. To be continued. Um, <laughs> what's going to be interesting to me is, I mean, I guess if there's, I don't know if it's fair to call it a silver lining or not, but um, I mean, I was trying, I was thinking the other day, wow, what if this was happening in October here in Vermont, at the height of the tourist season, fall foliage, when billions of dollars come into the state? Right, right. Uh, that would really uh, put a, <laughs> what's the right word, a damper on things. Right. I mean, at least... In March, while I'm sure there are going to be a lot of businesses that are affected and, and ski areas, I suppose, yeah. but at least we're, ski season is sort of winding down. It's yep. it's kind of that in between mud season almost. Uh, so I, I suppose one could say it could be worse, but it's it's certainly going to be bad enough. And the long term economic impact is going to be interesting it's gotta, to see. It's, well, we don't have any cruise ships, luckily, and uh, but it and uh, it does seem like it's going to totally throw the economy completely off for a long time. Mm. So many things uh, have been stalled, all these, uh, in the um, debt uh, among companies, you see that story that um, the high amount of debt, right. almost like right. the housing uh, bubble right. from- Shades of 2008. Companies expect the money to keep rolling in as, right. soon as it stops, it's everything just same kind Same thing, of kind of thing that happens every time, yeah. it seems no, it's like. It's like living from paycheck to paycheck. Right. I mean, it's right. coming right during a presidential election, so. Right. Yeah, anyway, a lot of tentacles. Yes. We may touch upon uh, a little bit later. Um, well, okay, as Howard said, to be continued because this story clearly has a way to go yet. And, has uh, legs, as we say in the business. Um, <laughs> hopefully everyone uh, you know, uh, is able to get the information they need to uh, at least to lower their risk as much as possible. Um, I guess the other big story we probably would have been talking about, uh, <laughs> and I guess we will, um, Town meeting ended a week or so ago, so we sort of digested pretty much uh, whatever the takeaways were on that. But uh, just to kind of uh, go around, I guess, Howard, let's take advantage of having you here and, and telling us what uh, your your feelings were from uh, the town meetings held over in Wyndham County. Anything special or unusual come out uh, over the other side of the mountain? Or yeah, I mean, it was a quiet town meeting, but there was always a couple of quirky issues that are worth watching. Brattleboro voted on a non-binding issue about moving to a mayoral uh, form of government. There was a lot of talk leading into it. Um, community TV shows and a lot of campaigning, et cetera. In the end, it went down in flames. It was uh, 1,722 to 529, so not much support for that change. Um, a lot of the discussions were, were the same, that um, the, the, the voters would have accountability and a mayoral would be more accountable to the voters, but Brattleboro didn't go for it. There were some interesting discussions in Vernon um, on July 1st, the solid waste law, the next phase of Vermont right. solid waste oh, yeah. law changes. Um, you're not going to be able to throw compost out starting July 1st. And so Vernon had a little discussion about pays you throw and how much money to put into their curbside pickup. Um, in the end, they decided to s keep their pay as you throw system and to put an extra $100,000 or so into recycling to kind of keep their system going, but I think a lot of communities over the next few months are going to try to figure out how to move into this next phase of dealing with the compost. Um, the Deerfield Valley voted for their communications union district. That happened a couple places around the state. I know there was one here in Beddington. Mm -hmm. There was also one up in the Northeast Kingdom. And this is a way for municipalities to join together to try to bring broadband into some of the underserved areas. areas. <clears throat> and in Deerfield, Marlboro, Halifax, Whitingham, and Wilmington all voted to join a district. So they're gonna try to formalize the agreement and go after some state money mm -hmm. to try to bring broadband. Many feasibility grants, yeah. And lastly, Dummerston <clears throat> has bats in their town hall. <laughs> Uh-oh, perfect. Dummerston <laughs> approved uh, $1,500 to take care of their Excellent. bats. Excellent, oh. all oh. right. So that's oh. a There's quick a sum up. <laughs> I, hate, I hate having to duck for bats. <clears throat> bats I've in had, the belfry. Yeah. yeah, right, right. Well, Jim, you were tell, we were talking before we went on there a little bit about the, the Bennington results. Uh, I, yeah, I- Kind of intriguing. Well, it, 
it surprised us a little bit that uh, the one um, percent uh, option tax went down in flames, and it had four different questions on each of the categories of sales that you could add one one percent to. Well, they had separate votes on what the sales, meals, uh, rooms, alcohol. Well, yeah, retail, mm-hmm. alcohol, okay. rooms, meals, uh, and every one of them went down, especially the retail, which is would have bring brought in the largest amount of money. And I didn't follow. What was the like, oh, why do you think there was such opposition? In well, there were, there, were, there were certain people that uh, kind of high profile and uh, opposing a lot of things in town government. And I think that helped. Uh, they were all over the uh, Internet. There was at least um, one, two candidates for, of the six for select board who were against it. But and, the argument was that the government would take the well, money? Well, they or? would take the money and use it you know, the wrong way or something like that. But it was 1.3 million almost that could have been added. And I think the select board was all set to do a, um, uh, like a something every budget season, they would have um, uh, a public hearing or two. They were ready to spend it. And and, you know, to to decide how to spend it and then commit to doing that that way. But that wasn't good enough, I guess. People just didn't trust them. And there seems to be a lot of mistrust uh, from certain battles over the years. Uh, there's there's a certain group that does not like Stu Hurd, who's been there almost forever mm-hmm. as the town manager. Over 20 and years they're always now, complaining right? about him. But a lot of other people, seems like the majority, I think, but uh, support him. So there, there's distrust. And, and that came out as soon as... As soon as you mention tax, I guess that's what mm. can happen. But I was kind of surprised it went down that that much because you have you would have had that money to put in every year, and it were a lot of it was going to be to promote the town and to do big projects, which they don't have money for now. So maybe something will come back later. Uh, some of the opponents actually said, if you give us a project that um, that you want to spend that on. We'll probably vote for it. Um, one one idea was to buy the Southern Vermont College campus, and that got a lot of play. But that, that also might be might have some other buyers out there in in the, in the wind too. So another uh, town meeting next year yeah. comes around every year. Yeah, if they mm-hmm. if they come up with a project that they or more than one project that they want to specifically spend it, and I think they they probably could get it. And I think the town. Uh, select board, and uh, I know Stu Hurd wants to bring it back. He said that right after the vote, but not in, probably not in the same format. Well, that's interesting because uh, usually isn't uh, a local option tax kind of pitched as a way to kind of uh, well, that was a, soften property taxes? That's exactly, yeah, that's the thing. They were going to use quite a bit, well, at least a portion of that, and that's what really surprised me is that people didn't vote for it for that reason. Right. That would have been... Uh, a reduction, it, it, it's gone up two or three percent or sometimes more every year. So you would think they would. Hmm. Manchester just had, do you, are you familiar with that recent? Um, they completely did away with what would have been a, um, an increase in the property tax, I thought. I thought I read that. Um, because so, of the money from the local because of, they have this other revenue. Yeah, right. I know right. Wilmington started their local option tax a few years ago, and they're just having a they good seem to, time spending it. Right, and it's, uh, they do, I think, all projects that people apply for. Right. And and they have it, a big tourist economy there, of course. So a lot of that money is coming in from out of state, mm-hmm. which is one of the arguments for it. Yeah, well, the other, part, the other argument, though, uh, for it here even, is that Bennington has much more retail sales than Manchester. And it's the biggest town. People come here to buy things, uh, so and, and you're talking about you're residents. talking about right. one penny on a dollar or yeah. one one dollar on a hundred. So, you know, I don't I don't know how that seems like a big burden to, but a lot of people thought yeah. so. Well, yeah. I, I I went to the London Dairy Town meeting on tu- on Tuesday, and they had an extended uh, debate on the same question that uh, they, there was a proposal. People get really fired raise up, a, though. Raise a one percent local option tax, and that was defeated. Um, right. Went to a paper ballot. Uh, I think it was like a two to one margin. Yeah. I think fifty five yeah. to twenty five, somehow something like that. Uh, but the same argument, well, the same same arguments. Well, no, 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 no. It's, it's 30% of it's going to go to the state anyway. They People thought that was, like, you know, unfortunate because that's for the administration. Right. 
And then, then there was a lot of uh, disputing uh, that, you no, know, it really won't lower our property taxes. You know, the, the, the government will find a, a way to yeah. spend, spend it and not reduce property taxes. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, it, it was discussed for almost an hour. Well, that's, uh, that is true, though, that uh, a lot of people even in favor of it said, if you don't do something else with the money, it's going to rise back up for the property tax. But if you put in uh, some kind of a facility that will draw more visitors, uh, do something else, recreation, there, there are a couple of projects that they'd like to do around Bennington, then you improve your town and, you, and your uh, grand list will, will improve too. Uh, so just cutting the property tax alone would probably not last very long. It would mm -hmm. rise back up. Yeah. Well, um, shifting gears somewhat, uh, Howard, you, you were telling us earlier uh, <clears throat> about the student waiting study. Uh, Waiting study. <laughs> waiting study, yeah. <laughs> Not students waiting, well, but they're waiting. For waiting. <laughs> right. Um, I was in Montpelier yesterday. Um, well, this is a, a really important study that came out um, a couple months ago, and the Agency of Education asked for it. Um, it's about 150 pages, and I know that education funding eyes, I can hear them glazing over through the cameras. <laughs> but in a nutshell, the 150 page report said that Vermont student wait, uh, waiting study is, um, it's not working right now. That poor rural towns that have, that has a lot of poverty, they're paying a lot of money into the education system and they're not getting as much back. So this report really laid it out, looking at data, looking at what low-income students cost to educate. And this report is putting together kind of a new formula so that for every dollar you send up to Montpelier, you get X amount back. And um, it's very complex stuff, but basically at the end of this report, there are quote unquote winners and losers. And there are towns that are gonna do better with it. And there are towns that are gonna end up spending a lot more. And so what's happening now is that <clears throat> Laura Sibilia, who's from the Deerfield Valley, is a big um, proponent of this study. And so the advocates right now are trying to push this through. And they're saying, hey, this is a 150-page study. You guys looked at this for a year and a half. The data is clear. We have to take care of this now. But there's just not a lot of appetite in Montpelier to move ahead. We're just coming out of Act 46. Mm -hmm. We've got big changes on board with special education funding. And there's a feeling like school districts just need to catch their breath for a year or two. But the advocates are saying a year or two for kids in second and third grade, that's, that's a lot of time yeah. you know, mm -hmm. to keep putting this off. Um, even coming out of Act 46, the most struggling districts are having a really tough time right now. Some of the tax increases are just eye-popping. In Marlboro, in Wyndham, I mean, the school budgets are up like double digits, mm -hmm. and, and people are just freaking out. So in Montpelier yesterday, there was a um, press conference, and there was a hearing with the Senate Education Committee. Crossover is this Friday. Mm -hmm. And so the advocates are trying to get this included in another bill for at least the legislature to say, which they like to do. Let's study it one more year. Yeah. Let's put together a plan so that if we move ahead on this next year, what's it gonna look like? Um, there's not even a lot of encouragement to do that. So we're gonna have to see what happens at the end of this week, where it goes. And, and at a time when the legislature may be uh, accelerating its yeah. uh, adjournment date, uh, trying to get something like that through when they've got several other things that have been kind of in the pipeline for a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And in an election year, uh, Right. Could be, speaking of elections. Very difficult. We have a new candidate for governor from our neck of the woods. Patrick well, Winburn. Patrick Winburn uh, has, uh, is an attorney who, who has pretty much taken on insurance companies most of his career in uh, personal injury lawsuits. Uh, he is a progressive Democrat um, running for that uh, nomination. And... Um, he launched his campaign, well, late last month, but officially this month. And he has um, a lot of ideas that are very similar to Bernie Sanders. His, one of his, um, uh, he's a very strong Sanders supporter. Uh, he, he, he thinks that we could um, reshuffle the deck, is what he calls it, uh, as far as economic advantages uh, or 
the benefits of the economy. And he wants to try to do that uh, with, you know, with everyone up in Montpelier. He also wants to move quick, quickly on uh, raising the minimum wage, uh, family leave, and, and things like that, which he says have been bottled up because the governor has uh, vetoed many of these things or either stalled it or vetoed it, that uh, the House and Senate pass things like that and um, get stopped. And he wants to be the one to come in and uncork the bottle, he says. Uh, so, and he's also <clears throat> traveling around with his dog. Uh, I think a sheep dog, I'm not sure. But it's, uh, and his daughter is the campaign manager. So I'm not sure, he's, he's spending quite a bit on ads up in, uh, on TV and uh, around the state. So I don't know if, uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I know he's been at um, Burlington stations and on mm -hmm. um, the radio and he's, he, I think he's traveling around quite a bit, spending quite a bit of money of his own. So we'll see what happens. But the, the kind of campaign, low key at first, maybe it's almost like, you know, the the book travels with Charlie, and you know, something could catch fire there. I think you never know. He's kind of he's not, uh, he's soft spoken in a way, but he's also been in many many trials around the state. So he's not mm -hmm. he's not. Uh, that could be a shrinking he could, oil. He's, no, not at all. So, <laughs> and he, he wins a lot of them, I know, because we've covered some. <clears throat> well, uh, it'll be interesting to see. He's going to be competing with, uh, what, Rebecca Holcomb, the former education secretary. Well, he's, and, uh, uh, he's very David similar in, in positions to, uh, to uh, lieutenant governor. Yeah. And so I don't know how that's going to work out. And Siegel is that way, too, right? Very similar. Right. She's <clears throat> She's running for lieutenant governor. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's right. Um, yeah. Holcomb, too. I, I don't know exactly about... I guess I haven't followed her positions very uh, closely. Pretty but progressive. Pretty mm -hmm. progressive, yeah. I would think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, um, so it'll be interesting, but they're all, they'll all be in the same mix, and we'll see how, how it turns out with the voters. Right. And the official filing deadline comes in April, and uh, maybe, maybe there'll be more people. It comes up then. pretty fast, though, isn't yeah, it? It's going to be does, a, yeah. August, right? It'll be interesting <clears throat> to see. You know, of course, Governor Scott has not officially announced yet. Right. So um, I think a lot what do you of hear us, about that? <clears throat> I don't know. Just a lot of people are feeling. Um, so I, I, I can't speculate. We're going to have to see. Yeah. And with all of this, again, coronavirus, uh, how it's going to affect the polls and how it's going to affect his decision if he's, you know, embroiled in a, in a serious crisis, it could, you know, impact his decision if he feels like it's not a good time for him to bail if the <clears> state's <throat> right in the middle of this. But those are the decisions he has made. There was a funny press conference from Montpelier where uh, a reporter was asking him if he was still having fun. And Governor <laughs> Scott was like, fun? <laughs> this job, it's never been fun, you know. That's not why I got into this. So. He could I'm still be a, my race car he could be a stock car driver still. Yeah. I see quite yeah. a few guys in, in that uh, the dirt track scene sure. are um, yeah. are his age and older. He's still popular. <laughs> He's still no, popular. I, I, it would be a shock and a half if he didn't run for re-election, I think. Uh, I, I wouldn't say shock and a half. I'd say a shock. I mean, he's been there, what, two or? Two, this two be, terms. Two yeah. terms, yeah. Third term, yeah. If, uh, which is... Kind of normal. It's brutal. It's a, you but know it's a hard, again. You know. He, it's, it's it looked like he was it was wearing on him a little bit in that one mm. press conference where he said like you know it's not fun and but so we'll see. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> well. Well, and, and on the presidential level, level just real quick, uh, our, our junior senator seemed to uh, had a kind of a bad week following a. Well, two weeks in a row where things kind of uh, reverse. It's, it was, it's amazing. If we were talking, I think, three or four weeks ago, we would have said, wow, Bernie has like, got the pathway to the That's nomination. That's incredible. And almost overnight, it seemed just basically starting with the South Carolina primary, all of that reversed itself, and he, he got uh, kind of pounded pretty badly on Super Tuesday. And then last, uh, this past Tuesday, losses in Michigan, which was a mm -hmm. state he was, I think, looking forward to. And... Uh, but well, I think I think what he won two out of the six states, but uh, that's not enough to really oh, no. shift the <clears throat> dynamic around. I, I I'm surprised think. more at Biden that being as popular as he looks to be, in at least in the primaries, and I hear he's didn't it, didn't he have a 40 point lead in Florida now or something like that? Yeah. And I'm not sure wh what's going to happen now, but you have the virus out there. Are they going to campaign very much? Uh, 
and uh, they have that debate. The only thing I would, would, would hate for them to do is to fight too much and uh, split the party. And well, also looking out as really coronavirus the, is going to impact um, how way. President Trump is well, doing. Well, Trump is really going to be, yeah. You know, there are people on the bubble who are maybe deciding between President Trump and the Democrat. And depending how President Trump comes out of this, he could come out looking great. He mm -hmm. could handle it or he could totally have it blow up in his face. So I think there's definitely going to It's really hard some, to see how it would, would totally end by that by November, but maybe uh -huh. it would be good if it did, but uh, it's right. hard to see that. Uh, but I have a feeling that a lot of people just have seem to have made up their mind that Biden is Mr. Common Collected or whatever they think he is, and that's what that's what would be good to, to run in the fall. I mean, that's my impression, and I, and I, I don't think they're ready for uh, too much change. Maybe that's another factor that in the recent results, because it seemed pretty, pretty dramatic in the past two groups of uh, primaries. Yeah, and remember, though, that people, when Bernie won, it was Iowa and New Hampshire, and everyone was saying they're mostly white states, they're small mm -hmm. states, they're rural states. So um, I don't know if, if the Biden campaign was really prepared for such a turnaround, but this is kind of the their long game they've been playing the whole time is like, just sit tight, you know, right. let it go. We've got South Carolina. And, I think um, he was a little nervous, though, by the time that came yeah, out. <laughs> yeah, he didn't look good before it, but he seems like he's really... He gave a pretty good speech after the uh, the recent He just uh, looked like a different voting. person after he looked for, he looked Well, he looked pretty, very calm after this uh, last one and gave a kind of a good presidential-style speech. I mean, Bernie gave a pretty good speech yesterday, too. Uh, I just hope they can come to accommodation uh, without having to... Well, knock each the, other. That's going to be the next test. Uh, right. If, if, uh, They're going to have a debate the on Sunday. Sanders right. supporters can join forces. Right. Uh, right. That, didn't that, work so well be, last time. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in 2016, uh, didn't seem like there was a no. closing of the ranks, so to speak, as as much as uh, the let's say certainly Hillary Clinton would have wanted, but. Uh, uh, I guess we well, still have a long way to go. Uh, it's quite it a ways. like the election's been going on for a yeah. long time already. I mean, they don't even have, <laughs> when, when are they supposed to have the convention? Will they even have it? But oh, I, that's another question. July, July or right. so? I mean, well, how will campaigning events be? Uh, right. I mean, I, I, I'm assuming that, you know, in two months or so, uh, as I understand it anyway, this may well be, well, assuming the, the mm. country gets itself organized and test kits are available and hospitals are able to supply the resources we need, uh, right. we could uh, hopefully be thinking, oh, that was mm. uh, something. I, that I would love to great. see the uh, government do a, um, uh, to pay people to stay home uh, or if they, ha if they test positive to have cover that cost when companies don't cover it. I think that would, that would probably stabilize the, the right. economy right away. Uh, something like that, but mm -hmm. not, not saying you're gonna, you're gonna stop everybody from coming from Europe, uh, whatever, whatever he said uh, last night. I mean, that, that scares people. Right, and plus, you know, most people can't work remotely. I mean, right. there may be some people who can and uh, don't miss a beat, but uh, for the majority of people who uh, are working in certain service industries or 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 at a factory, I mean, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, option, you right? have to have some kind of uh, paid paid yeah. leave, I think. Otherwise, this is going to get yeah, well, really bad. Mm -hmm. People can't afford not to work for more than a day or two. Yeah, uh, a lot of people can't. You can't tell work. them to go home because they, <laughs> they probably won't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, much more we could talk about, I'm sure, but we are just about out of time. I just wanted to thank, uh, once again, Howard Weiss-Tisman uh, from uh, Vermont Public Radio and Jim Therrien from the Bennigan Banner for being with us today and filling us in on, on all the uh, backstories. Lots to talk about. <laughs> thank you very much for being with us today, and uh, we'll see you again the next time. This has been Press Pass on GNET TV. Have a great day.